Okay, y'all. Today, I'm going to fix a leaking RockShox charger damper compression assembly. A lot of these dampers leak over here. Small amounts, but, you know, over the course of the service interval, you often end up with enough leakage that the uh, uh, bladder actually like, caves in and it's, it's, uh, it's a little bit low fluid. Plus, it just looks bad when your damper is leaking. Not confidence inspiring, so we'll fix it. The cause of this, by the way, is a uh, design flaw. It's not a seal failure. So, it's a U-cup seal in here, which means it, it needs pressure for that seal to actually seal. And the amount of pressure this bladder generates is negligible. So that's why, you know, you have a bit of oil coming through because that seal is that U cup seal is not quite energized with the amount of pressure that's generated by the bladder. So anyway, that's where we're at. And if you ask Rob Shocks how to fix this problem, they will tell you need, you need to replace your entire damper. I'll go for a walk. Mm -hmm. There are a few iterations of this damper, by the way. Some are harder than others to fix. There's some minor design changes to compression assembly. So, that's the cassette tool. I'm gonna loosen this um, collar. Bladder will t twist. Try, try to restrain it by holding on to it. But it's always gonna twist. So whatever. A real way around. Twist it once it's done. Boom. 10 millimeter socket on a 10 inch extension. You don't need a deep socket, but that's what I'm I just happen to be I'm happen to be using. This uh, this is the pissed uh, base valve base valve nut or bolt that I'm loosening. And it has red Loctite on it, so it'll be a little stiff. Eventually, it'll just come apart. Be careful, because the whole thing will separate. Okay, so in case this falls apart, it's a clamping shim at the top and then just a, a widening um, sequence of shims. On the bottom side, there's a spring check valve and a shim. The spring is oriented so the narrow side is on the head of the bolt. The wide side is on the shim. And the shim is right against this base valve. So because of this red Loctite, this didn't actually fall out, which is kind of helpful, but a lot of the times it does. So anyway, we have this. This also has an orientation. That's your high speed compression adjuster. There's a recess on one side. That's where the spring goes and it's oriented like that. Pushes down on these shims. Reloads them. So now, need to um, expose this and so 
So we expose this this little shaft. I think it's a ten millimeter. Yes. It's a ten millimeter. So I'm just using rock shocks, vice blocks, whatever. Else anything will work. So just clamp that and then this will come off. to be careful with this step uh, that's the high speed adjuster when you pull it out actually I might not even pull it uh, so I'm just gonna remove the bladder yeah so by the way the bladder orientation is marked by this dot that's towards the top uh, so this it's kind of hard to work with, but I'll, uh, I'll demonstrate what to do next. But basically, first, I'm going to put a rag over this and pull out the black part. I was trying to avoid happened which is the detents went flying uh, so anyway normally you capture the detents when you do this I failed so there's the spring and a ball the other side went flying which is okay because it works with one side actually because the two detents are 180 degrees apart so it does work we have replacements you have replacements wow so next this is the challenge in order to remove this by the way so that's where the leakage is happening this interface and in order to remove this and to be able to re replace that seal these brass pins need to be removed. So that's the challenging part. So I usually try punching them out first. And if it doesn't work, I move on to drilling. as far as it goes it seems yeah it's going to have to get drilled out so really do this near the other parts of the bag.
moving a bit of aluminum. Not supposed to. Okay. So it went through. So did the drill bit. Yeah, I think that's done. This side. Okay, so it is hard to work with this thing. It's all jammed up at the moment. Trying to free this up. One of the pins is out. The remainder of it is. Oh! I was just wiggling this and that one came out. So, whole thing comes off. Mm. And then. Center piece. Now, oh, see, there is that brass key. Jam. These needle nose pliers do not exist. It's upstairs. Oh, too big. Never actually had this happen. Um, Can't get it with the pick. No. That's a massive burr. Loosen it up. It needs to fall out. Okay, so that's it. Came right out. Now, the most important part of this procedure is to clean up all the metal shards from your suspension area. All of them. This cloth with the metal shavings, put it away. Pull this out, wipe this off. I'm gonna spray these down. 
to make sure it Boom. So that's good. And this is the seal, this infamous U cup I was talking about. This U cup. So you need pressure to energize this lip. So it opens up and uh this is against the inside of this. So we are replacing this. Throwing it out. The other thing I like to do, because I drilled on this, I'm going to take out the low, low speed compression adjuster, make sure, uh, when I bent this actually, make sure that the low speed compression adjuster doesn't have any metal shards in it. Just gently bent this back. It's like a spiral shape. Super easy to bend. Also easy to bend back. So be careful of this circlip, comes right out. Just pull this out. Boom. So that's how that works. This thing. So this thing unthreads itself. That's your adjuster moving that rod. Adjuster stays in place, this moves in and out. So yeah. I like to replace that seal while I'm at it. Never leaks, but might as well. I've come this far. So also spray this out. Boom. to find find the seals so these two seals is what we're going to use these can be purchased at mtb hydraulics by the way pretty cheap a few bucks I, I need to put them up but they will be available And it also comes with a third seal, which is for a different iteration of this compression assembly. And the third one for free. Third one. Uh, it, Buy two, get one free. Yeah, it doesn't get used in this case. Oh, it's the wrong seal. Yeah. That's the one. It's the wrong seal. You throw it out again? Sorry, so installing the new O-ring, grab the wrong one. Yeah, so that's that. Goes on just like that, no worries. And then, install it. And you need to kind of preload this, not this little protrusion. So it pops in place and then kind of Wiggle it around so it actually drops drops down like that. And then get this circlip in. No worries. Ain't nothing. And 
No worries, she ain't nothing. Okay. And then she she moves. Okay. So I already installed the other one. That's the important seal. The one that's actually in need of replacement. Now I lost the one side because I was too busy, uh, you know, photo ops distracted me. So normally I don't lose it, obviously. So we just glue it in place with grease. And normally you would kind of pinch this on both sides, line it up with one of the cutouts, decent grooves, and push her down. She goes down. So that's good. And now there is a specific orientation for this. So you want to make sure the end of that spiral is visible there and and, and that's the point when you install this so that this lower um, lower hole is in line with the end of the spiral. And then the other one lines up and boom. And that's the range of motion. This can go to the top of the slot. So now we're gonna use some homemade dowels. We're gonna use spoke. Okay, so we're gonna take this spoke just a regular spoke. This is the, the threaded end. Two millimeter spoke. Two millimeter thickness spoke. I forgot to say that. And then we'll cut it maybe about two millimeters from the end, ends of the thread. And hold on to it. Okay, it's kind of dull. Uh, so now this created a burr. We need to file it off. Okay file to that and then the other so the other end will we'll cut to about hmm, uh, five millimeters of total length which is the width of this so I'm just gonna cut right next to it That's good. Something like that. So, you know, about half of this is smooth and the other half is threaded. Now I'm going to file this. Try not to file the, to the tool itself. So that's that. To check that it works, I'm gonna wipe off my hand. And I'm gonna check that it's the correct size. Okay. right in a little bit on the loose
side actually. But it does work, it seems. Okay. Not bad. This fork is used by us, so I'm not gonna, you know, if it falls out, whatever, we'll fix it. It's someone else's fork, you know. Oops. It fell apart. I accidentally pulled this out. You know, you can make it using other stuff, spring pins or something, whatever works. Anyway, I'm going to call that good enough and then make the second one. So same idea as before. Alongside this one, poop. Oh, you're miss. You're miss. Oh, yeah. This is more like seven millimeters. Mm. It's too long. I'm gonna try to. It's a finicky process, but you know, I'm sure there are better options than using this, using spokes. In the past, we actually got some screws machined down so you can thread it in and then the screw narrows into the slot. It, that's also a pain so and also kind of crappy so now we just do this because it's equally crappy and less of a pain so put in pretty easily it's on the easy side that it, that it went in but I think it'll work doesn't you know what that's okay just gonna test this I just gently pulled on this and and it doesn't seem to come out. Yeah, good enough. As long as it's your own fork and you're conscious of it. So 
so that's it. Um, if you're a shop doing this, probably better to do the method we used to. We still have those M3 screws machined down. You know, if you need some, just email me. MTB info at mtb hydraulics.com. Same for the seal kits. Info at mt, mtb hydro. Well, sorry, the seal kits are on mtb hydraulics.com. So, yeah, if you need anything, just uh, shoot us an email and we'll get whatever you need. So I'm just putting this bladder back on, just slid off. You want to, you want it to slid, um, sit in that groove and support this thing from the inside. And just grab onto the whole thing. And then back to this part. No big deal. Okay, that's tight. And then spring and then the recessed side goes in you wanna wind this back out all the way to this least amount of damping so just uh, removing some of this old Loctite We'll add some some of this uh, thread lock for good measure, whatever. Not essential, I don't think. So be careful with this. If a lot of the times the screw needs to be supported or else it's, it falls back out. So usually just shove in the end of the extension and push on it while getting it to catch on those threads. And once it catches, put the socket in. So then we're back at this point. Break it just snug, and then a good idea to put some grease here so it doesn't bind. And that's it. I'm just, I was just supporting this bladder or gripping it so it doesn't twist. And then that's pretty much it. So Need some oil now. 
just a maximum of three weight. Good at, good at this point it's good to you know just kind of plug up this whole assembly so everything's in series and then I like to snug this up really hard no just moderately hard Just that much. No need for more than that. And now we'll do a bleed on this. Just gently support it like that. Something, something like that. Um, T10. M5 syringe fitting with it or a syringe with an M5 fitting available from MTB hydraulics of course MTB hydraulics is your one-stop shop for anything suspension so These picks that we used are also available from mtbhydraulics.com. You know, one stop shop. It's the Amazon of the suspension industry. Okay, so it's, uh, it's very low in oil. Ladder is completely drained, so So that's it. Quickly shove that back. adjustment range that was the least amount of compression damping and that's the most works well that's it
That's how you fix a leaking compression assembly in a charger damper. God bless.